What is up guys? So today we are actually back. Yeah, technically. Um, so we're back, but with a new cup. Hey, so Rambo Cup is officially underway, at least on the channel. It's not going to start until June 1st, so you do have a couple of weeks to at least prepare, but that's what I'm here for, is to try to spit out enough content to get you at least halfway prepared for your Rainbow Cup if you have some insane community that does it on the 1st of June. But anyways, today we're actually starting out with the highest voted Pokemon over the last two days. You guys would not believe, I'm sure you would because most of you voted for it, 12 different freaking comments about Fortress and that's not even counting all the people that thumbs up those comments and stuff like that. Fortress definitely was the Pokemon to be in the comment section. So here we are, we're going to do Fortress today. So let's actually get started. Fortress is actually a bug and steel type Pokemon maxing out at level 40 with 15s across the board. You can achieve a 2282. Now with a 0 on attack, 9 defense, and 15 stamina at level 25 and a half, we actually can achieve a 1500 right out of the gate. Oddly enough, I ended up hatching a perfect Pineco at some point in my life. And a perfect Pineco can actually hit 1500 when evolved into Fortress, relatively close to level 20, so there's that as well. According to my spreadsheets and all the numbers that I have ran, Fortress should rank around 9th in bulk and 6th in stat products, so really, really high numbers there, really good to see. And of course, all that comes from these base stats here, which are Oh, they're so good for PvP. 161 on attack, 205 defense, and 181 in stamina. Now, whenever we take a look at his moves, I had to kind of fight with myself on the moves here because we do have Bug Bite and Struggle Bug as our two fast moves. And there's nothing wrong with those. It's pretty much Bug Bite is a clear winner here. We don't really need to argue too much. We actually gain a extra third of an energy per turn for the same amount of damage. So why not go with Bug Bite? Then we get into these uh, charge moves here, which are quite interesting. So we only have one stab candidate with Heavy Slam. Then we have Earthquake and Rock Tube. Now, some people out there are definitely wanna gonna go with Heavy Slam because of its just raw amount of speed over the other two moves. Being that Heavy Slam is at 50 energy and Rock Tomb is at 60 energy, it does mean that we can shave off two seconds worth of playtime to get to Heavy Slam faster than Rock Tomb. But with my testing, with my simulations, which we'll go over in a second, Rock Tomb actually just performs a little bit better than Heavy Slam. We do end up winning a few more matches and our win percentage does go up just a little bit. So I kind of ended up going with that. But there is a case that Heavy Slam is faster and it can help you win in a lot of other scenarios. Then we have Earthquake. And Earthquake is just, you know, Earthquake. Everybody loves Earthquake. So I definitely went with Earthquake because I knew it was going to be our hard hitting move. It was going to be the one that we could just push a ton of damage with. And then it was just down to Heavy Slam or Rock 2. Honestly, I think that you could go with either one, but for the purposes of this video, I did choose Rock Tomb only because it did slightly inch out a few more wins for us. So, there's that. So let's actually go over these moves really fast. We already talked about our fast moves, but three energy for three damage per turn, and then after stab, we do get 3.6 damage per turn, and then Struggle Bug is the exact same, except we forfeit a third of an energy per turn. Then we have Heavy Slam here. For 50 energy, you get 70 damage at a 1.4 damage per energy ratio. After stab, it does get bumped up to an 84 on the damage for a 1.68, which is fairly nice. Then we do have Earthquake. For 65, you get 120 damage for 1.85 damage per energy ratio, so always great there. Rock Tomb here is 60 energy for 70 damage at a 1.17. Unfortunately, it's not the most efficient move, and if you're really looking for efficiency, Heavy Slam would definitely be the contender over Rock Tomb there, but I digress. So now let's actually get into some shield matchups here, and let's actually look at how Fortress does in the shielding scenarios. So our first scenario here is actually our zero versus zero, which is where I don't have any shields and my opponent doesn't have any shields, or kind of like a mock-up, like closing type situation. Fortress actually wins 67.4% of the matchups. That's pretty freaking good. Considering that we have five different typings, of course the numbers don't round out 
exactly to 20%, you know, it's not an even like amount of Pokemon that you're typing, but basically you can kind of think of it as 20% is one typing. So 67.4% is roughly three fifths of the entire cup, which is roughly three full typings worth of Pokemon. That's a lot. Next we have our two versus zero shield situation where I have two shields and my opponent doesn't have any shields. We actually end up winning 87% of those matchups. But I'm actually not too concerned about the ones that we win against. I'm actually wanting to know which ones that we lose. The reason for that is that if I have complete shield advantage and my opponent doesn't have any shields and they can still beat me, I want to know which Pokemon those are. And to no one's surprise here, Fortress is going to have a hard time breaking a lot of the fire types because we do have a quad weakness to fire. Yeah, a lot of the fire types are going to end up being able to beat us no matter which way you slice it. No matter how many shields you give Fortress, the fast moves can just really start to tear us down. Doesn't matter how many charge moves they even throw because the fast move can generally just melt us. Next situation is actually a zero versus two. So when I don't have any shields and my opponent actually has two full shields, how many Pokemon do we actually end up beating? 18.5, which is not terrible. Almost every single grass type Pokemon gets beaten here. 18.5% is almost an entire typing worth of Pokemon. And it actually shows here. Almost all of the grass do end up falling to us, which is great. Our last shield situation here is a two versus two. So when I have two shields and my opponent also has two shields, or in a kind of like mock-up opening type situation, we actually end up winning 44.6%. So not too shabby. So what does all that actually tell us? Well, it actually to me says that I should probably be using Fortress as a closer rather than an opener because the numbers don't lie. I still end up losing more as a closer rather than this opening position up here. So now we're actually going to get into a couple of simulations and everything will actually be on our little green screen here. We do have Fortress set up with our moveset which is Bug Bite, Earthquake, and Rock Tomb up against just all of the Rainbow Cup and then one shield for each side. So in all of the deep dives, I end up taking our subject Pokemon, of course Fortress today, and I put them up against the top 10 bulkiest Pokemon in the cup, and then I try to do some countering with our Pokemon as well, but all of this is ran with a one versus one shield scenario to try to give the most evenness to both Pokemon. So let's actually take a look here. In terms of the top 10, we actually have Jumpluff, Tentacruel, Meganium, and Shuckle as a clear win. Now, oddly enough, PV Pokey does not include Shuckle. If you actually look here, it just it's not it's not even included in the simulations. So I had to go and I had to run this simulation completely uh, just by itself, but no big deal. Uh, it still ended up losing, no surprise there. As far as our losses go, Azumarill, Dugong, Lapras, Lantern, and Mantine can all end up beating our fortress here. And then we have this lone Suicune here. Kind of an interesting matchup. So let's actually look at that one. So if we search for Suicune, if I can type here, let's actually go over and you can see that Suicune has a clear win here, but it's because it's using Hidden Power Fire. So with Hidden Power Fire, of course, it's gonna be really good up against the Fortress. But let's actually try to take Hidden Power out of the equation and let's see, I don't know, Extra Sensory. Extra Sensory actually allows Fortress to win with one HP, so in a real world scenario it might really be down to the wire and it might really come down to a couple of timings and lag issues, so really too close for my blood to really consider that a win for me, but that would be pretty much a tie. And then we have Snarl here, which if we look at, yeah, it actually ends up just flat out beating the Fortress. Now that Psychic type fast move is actually going to be resisted a lot by our Steel typing that we carry for Fortress, but this Dark type move doesn't even care. So we can actually break through with Suicune and pretty much just flat out beat our Fortress. But I did leave it kind of in the gray area because it does have Hidden Power. It really just depends on which Hidden Power that you actually have. Of course, Hidden Power Fire is going to be your best option here as that's the only weakness that we actually end up carrying as Fortress. In the countering section here, we actually are going to try to see what we should focus our attention on with our Fortress versus what do we actually want to bring to the table to just flat out beat Fortress. Well, let's actually look at what we should focus our attentions on with Fortress. So if we actually just go down on PB Pokey and we filter by an entire typing, 
As you can see here, the grass types are all being beaten. Basically, if you've never seen PVPokey.com, a battle rating over on the far right column, so it should be around right here, we actually have these battle ratings, and as long as it's above 500, that means the Pokemon is actually beating another Pokemon. So, as you can see, our worst possible matchup would be Victory Bell, with a battle rating of only 592, so that kind of seems like we're getting really close to losing to the Victory Bell, but we still end up beating. And our easiest possible matchup is Execute, and then Executor. Celebi's actually falling into this category, which by the way, Celebi was really highly, highly voted for. Kind of interesting, we'll probably be going over Celebi in the next few days at least. So the grass types are a definite easy win for our fortress here, especially a lot of that comes from our bug type fast move, which we know will do super effective damage to the grass. But then when you get into the execute, executor, and Celebi realm, they're going to be quad weak to our bug type move. Now we also do have bug here, and we only have two losses, so let's actually look at that. So we'll search by bug there, and we can actually see... Pineco, Ladian, Parasect, Ariados, Pinsir, Venomoth, Butterfree, and Yanma are all wins. Now, Beedrill and Scizor are actually ties, which is kind of cool. Scizor is actually another Pokemon that does carry the exact same typing, so it has the exact same weakness and resistances that Fortress does. So we actually end up tying against that. I didn't include ourselves because, of course, you can kind of build the Fortress to beat another Fortress that's not super, like heavy. But our two main losses are Heracross and Scyther. My two favorite bug type Pokemon. Yes. So those two bug types actually end up being able to beat the Fortress pretty well. I mean a battle rating of 316 for both of those is actually pretty high for them. So that ends up meaning that we're not struggling too hard in that matchup with those two Pokemon. But we... Yeah. So the bug type is pretty solid as a fairly okay typing to go up against. Only two losses is not too bad. Now in terms of what we should focus our attention on when we have to counter Fortress. If we just absolutely have to counter him, the fire typing is actually going to be our best bet up against the Fortress here. As you can see, the highest rated matchup is a Houndoom at a 219, which is not even close to 500, which would be tying holy cow so as you can see all these pokemon are just really really going to be able to tear through us charizard actually is the worst matchup for fortress so if you're honestly just worried about going up against the fortress charizard seems to be a really good one here ho-oh as well but i'm pretty sure the ho-oh is using hidden power yeah it's using hidden power because the only other moves that it has are steel wing and extra sensory which we know both of those aren't going to be doing very well but ho is actually a big threat as well. And then Arcanine, and then you can see it just kind of tears up from there. Next, we actually have our water typing. So I actually wrote water in the kind of like what we should use to get rid of Fortress area. Because Fortress does win against a couple of these, but not many of them. So I actually have Beating Sum written there. And if we look here, Tentacruel, Slowbro, Slowking, Kabuto... Slowpoke, Kingler, Krabby, Seedra, Kingdra, Croconaw, Kabutops, and then we get into some ties here. So all of the previously mentioned Pokemon are a pretty good win for us, but some of them kind of have some really big similarities here. So Tentacruel unfortunately only has poison type fast moves. And we have a huge resistance to the poison typing, so it has a really hard time getting over us in the first place. Slowbro and Slowking do carry that Psychic typing, which means that we can do super effective damage with our Bug type moves. Then we have Kabuto and Slowpoke, and all of these just start to get kind of in that gray area where they're not like super stat built. Like they, they just they don't have a whole lot of stats to really combat our moves here. So once we get past those and then into our ties, we do tie against Octillery and Starmie. I'm sure this Starmie is actually using Hidden Power. Yeah, as you can see, Hidden Power Fire. So kind of just take Starmie as a gray area here. And then we start to get into what actually beats us and a lot of the water types actually end up beating us. Mantine is the one water type Pokemon that can actually beat Fortress with very little effort. As you can see, a battle rating of 173 is 
pretty freaking devastating to a fortress. Then we have Azumarill, the Suicune, like I said, it's a great area. Polyrath, Quillfish, Blastoise, Lantern. It just gets, you know, pretty easy from there. All of these water types can actually end up beating our fortress. So that's kind of why the water types are more in the focused area on beating him because in general most water types will end up beating him. There are a couple of caveats though and you kind of want to steer clear of the water types or look heavily into your specific water type matchup that you're considering bringing. Next we actually have our electric typing and we only have two wins in this category being Electrode and Flaffy. Yeah, being that those are the only two Pokemon that we can actually just flat out beat at Fortress, the majority of the electric types are going to kind of be a problem. So we get into Jolteon, which is a loss for us. Raikou, which is a loss for us. Electabuzz, loss for us. And then let's actually just shift all the way down. You can actually see Zapdos down here at the bottom is actually our biggest threat as a Fortress. Kind of interesting. Lantern does show up here even though it's a water and an electric type Pokemon. Magneton and Magnemite are actually also pretty big deals. So, beings that we lose to the majority of the electric typings, you can kind of feel comfortable saying that, oh, well, I have an electric typing and I can pretty much beat uh, the Fortress as well. As long as you're not using both Electrode and Flaffy, you should be pretty good on the electrics. So last and not least here, let's actually go over a couple of pros and cons for our fortress here. Of course, we're going to start with the cons first. Let's get the bad out of the way. Our first con is that we do have a huge, huge weakness to fire. Being as our typing is bug and steel, we do carry a four times weakness to the fire type moves, which is really, really hard to get into sometimes. So there is that. He can be kind of targeted pretty heavily here. And that's kind of the other con, is actually people can really start to play around this fortress. Even though Fortress is such a big powerhouse, he has tons of resistances, he only has one weakness, he has a pretty good setup with his moves, he can be played around pretty hard. Considering that you lose to every single fire typing, considering that you lose to most of the water and most of the electrics, you kind of can get pretty much like just targeted with a fortress. I do think that we'll start to see people running just hard counters to fortress because people know it's already so good in this early stage of the meta. So it can kind of get targeted here, but that shouldn't stop you from using it. It should just kind of jumpstart your brain into thinking of ways to switch lock people. And then we actually go over to our pros, which actually the first pro that I have written down is great resistances. I mean, we have a ton of resistances. Carrying that bug and that steel typing is just great. Poison being one of the biggest resistances that we have can actually wall out quite a few Pokemon, which is just great. And our other pro is actually that it's a really, really good counter up against the grass typing, considering that we have a really just dedicated bug type move in the fast move area means that we can just target a lot of the grass types and not even have to care about their shields. So what that ends up doing is it creates this really hard type counter situation between Fortress and the grass types. So, you know those frenzy planners that, you know, everybody's going to be jumping on? Fortress is going to be really good up against those and it kind of makes this nice little like back and forth between some of the typings here. So I definitely think that Fortress is a good solid pick at the moment. If the meta does develop and it does end up carrying a lot more of the fire typing or even some of the other typings that could give Fortress some problems, it can be played around kind of easily. But, like I said, that shouldn't stop you from looking into Fortress yourself. But like I said, that shouldn't stop you from looking into Fortress yourself. I definitely think that he's worth a look and kind of see if he pieces into your team the way that you want him to. And we will actually talk a little bit more about Fortress in the upcoming days. I do have the top five of each typing videos coming out. Uh, it's going to take me a couple of days to put all of that information together. I'm also starting my new semester worth of classes today. Um, well, I shouldn't say classes. I only have one class, but uh, I am starting a new semester today. Plus, I'm getting ready to start looking for jobs, and I'm actually having like some, some interviews coming up. So, it'll take me a couple of days, but I'll get there. So, 
as always with these deep dives, I have a ton of Pokemon already commented. There were 52, I think, comments on the, the cup announcement video. So there's already that. Plus people were posting like, you know, eight and nine different Pokemon per comment sometimes. So I have a huge list of Pokemon to already go through. But if you are interested, you can definitely leave some comments down below for some Pokemon that you're looking for to deep dives on. And that's basically it for our first deep dive into the Rainbow Cup, guys. I really, really am excited for this. I'm so excited to be talking about a new set of Pokemon, and we have five different typings this time, so there's so much more variety. I'm super, super excited. So, that is actually it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out. And if, if possible, I'd actually like some feedback on the new setup. If you like it, let me know. If you hate it, I guess let me know so I can you know try to figure out something else. But anyways, that's actually it for today, guys. Always remember that if you like to like videos, you can do that. But if you don't, you can be that guy. Otherwise, let me just have to say down in those comments below. And until our next video, I will catch you then.